Um, and our session is called, uh, So How Do We Tell Them? And it's been amazing walking around the site today, uh, seeing all the fantastic things that are going on, all the wonderful ways in which we're uh, stewarding the environment better, which we're caring for the countryside, which we're um, reducing our carbon footprint, where we're taking more care in the way that we produce food, uh, where we're making more of a place for, for our nature and wildlife. Um, but people won't know about it unless we tell them. And that's really the, the thrust of our, of our session today. So my name's Tom Martin, uh, and my friend Annabel Shackleton is here. Uh, and we're really excited to be, to be presenting to you guys today. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for uh, sweating with us here. Uh, we all are, it's OK. Sweating with us here in this tent. Uh, and we're going to be showing you um, uh, probably a dozen different ways in which we can connect with our public. Um, uh, those will be ways that, that suit the introvert, suit the extrovert, suit everyone in between. Those with no time, those with lots of time. Uh, and I'm also, I'm going to make a promise, Annabelle, I'm going to show you, uh, show you farmers how to make a thousand pounds without doing anything that you're not already doing. And also get a free lunch at the same time. Is that a good promise? That's a good promise. Brilliant. Um, where are we? Here we are. But... Really, we're going to talk about um, uh, a few key things. Uh, and the main thing, actually, the main audience that we really want to be uh, addressing, Annabelle, actually, if you want to just step up, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do this as we rehearsed. Absolutely. The main thing we're going to be talking about today are schools. Families. Oh. Uh, our, the main thing we're going to talk about is our communities. No, kids. Okay. The main thing we're going to be talking about is how we address our neighbours. Teachers are important as well. Come on, you know, yeah. it's far more than what you've just said. That's right. There, is, there are so many audiences as well. There are so many people. You know, there are, there are, there are eight billion of us here on this planet. And it's actually really important that we, that we speak to all of those. Because most of us in this country don't have a living relative involved in food production. But people have been, never been more interested in where their food comes from. So... We're going to, to highlight, although um, Annabelle works specifically with uh, Leaf and Open Farm Sunday, we're going to highlight a whole raft of different opportunities for you to get involved, for you to connect with your neighbours. And you'll have to allow us, if it's okay, just for a moment, for this next 40 minutes or so, just to, um, just to shed our, our, our Englishness. And we're going to show you some of the things that we've done. Uh, we're not showing off. We just really want to encourage you guys uh, and, uh, and hopefully inspire you as well. Absolutely, thank you. Well, we had to use this photograph. I love it. It's a Weir End Farm, that beautiful drone image of British countryside. We have so many stories to share, and we're just hoping to give you lots of inspiration on how you can do it. Now, one thing that farmers often say to me when I talk to them about public engagement is, is who do I contact? You know, and or they're saying, oh gosh, well there's this organisation and that organisation. There are lots of organisations, but like every farm is different. You know, you've all got your own different needs as far as engaging with the public's concerned. So on the slide that you've got here, on the right hand side, is the. Um, it is a huge number of, uh, of organisations. We've got RET in Scotland. If there's anyone here from Wales, I apologise. My knowledge of uh, Welsh organisations isn't quite as, um, a, as strong as it should be. But there are a whole host of organisations dealing with um, bringing people from inner cities out onto farm, um, care farming, um, just lots of different organisations. And we come under the umbrella of access to farms. So there is a partnership there. There are lots of organisations, and you can find out about them. Um, but predominantly, as I work for LEAF, I'm just going to say a couple of things about what LEAF does. So LEAF, as you know, started in 1991, and right from the, heart, from the start in the heart of the organisation, as in promoting sustainable farming was that absolute firm belief and knowledge that we have to take the public along with us. Um, and then soon afterwards, in uh, 2001, Speak Out was developed. Um, we then Open Farm Sunday started in 2006, and we'll be talking a little bit more about these in a, in a few minutes. And then Leaf, Leaf Education came along in 2017 um, when we merged with FACE. And then, of course, Farmer Time, which Tom brought uh, to the organisation that we work in partnership with. So there is lots of things happening there. And we're, we're going to be telling you about lots of different resources. The one in the middle at the bottom there, I've got to mention, and I hope Susie's still here and is happy to see this. But there is a fantastic website called Farming is Magic. If you haven't been on there, it's farmingismagic.co.uk. And it, it, there are just some tiny little videos that just give that sparkle of magic as to how to share our farming story with 
a range of different audiences, and you really have got to go and see it. And then the other thing is farmers often say, like, if you're looking at doing uh, school visits, what, what do teachers want? What resources are there? How, how do I link things with the curriculum? If you haven't seen the site before, there's a website called um, Countryside Classroom, uh, .org .uk, that it's a partnership of um, over 30 different organisations and, uh, and th they're doing some amazing things. Uh, a huge number of resources are being um, downloaded from that site. I'm going to talk about that next. So, on to the next slide. Which I think is me. Fantastic. And what we'll do is we'll actually, I want to start today uh, in the same way that we're finished, just by encouraging you just to get involved. There are loads of those wonderful organisations there. And I'm very much of the ready, fire, aim approach to life. Let's just get involved in things. Let's work our way out as we go along. Um, let's have a little bit of preparation today, but just, just go for it. And I really, I really, uh, I used to work for a guy many years ago, a, a great maverick, and he used to occasionally have to tell me to JFDR, which is just effing do it. So that is what I'm also going to give to you guys today, if you're teetering on the edge of getting involved in a, in a new project uh, or, or doing something differently. So we're going to take you through a number of projects. And I'd first of all like you to, to, to start with, with our community garden. We have a community garden that was, in, uh, was on, our, on our farm that was actually inspired by the guys at Wakelins. If you've not been to Wakelins in Suffolk, I really, really recommend it. Um, uh, and the model is, uh, and it really came from a conversation uh, between my wife and myself, how many households would need to pull their veg budget in order to employ a gardener uh, and to grow the vegetables ourselves. And so we've got a, a community of 17 families now. We all put £10 in a week, which covers the, uh, the gardener, um, Paul, who we have for a, a day a week, and a little bit of infrastructure as well, uh, on, a, on a little bit of land on the farm that we, that we weren't really using. And so we bring those 16 families in. Um, we, we talk to them about what we're doing on the farm. We, we experiment with, with different ways of growing things. They, they see failure as well as they see success. And we get to grow a whole range of vegetables. Uh, and I take one share as my rent. So there's your free lunch. If you've got a little bit of, a little bit of land, actually this is a project that, that, that you can do very easily. And it's a great way to engage people with where their food comes from. And while they're there, we've planted some wildflowers along the edge and we've got a field of wheat just on the other side. They can't help but find out about food farming and rural life. So it's a great way to inspire that. Um, I'm just putting in one slide up for each of them, but for this, I wanted to put a second one. Oh, here we go. Just because we've... Going back, I think. Just because we've had, we've had such good fun. We've only been going in a few weeks, for a few weeks, but we've already had a great time, and it's a great way. It, we're all ages and stages. Uh, we've got grown-ups and children. Um, we've got all the demographics and backgrounds. We've got this lovely American couple here just showing off the uh, radishes and lettuces. Uh, we've got Victor over there who's planting some cabbage. He's from South Africa. Um, we've got Vicky in the middle. Um, she came with a, with a, we've been sharing recipes. She shared a fantastic recipe for rhubarb roast chicken. Doesn't that sound good? Ooh, I know, exactly. I had the same response. Uh, and we've, we've had a great time. And in fact, Sue, one of our, one of our great friends, uh, or now great friends, um, made a, a curry involving some pak choy because she said, I need to smuggle vegetables into my husband's diet. So there's another great, you know, some great tips there. But all, all the while, we're learning about our food and nutrition, where our food comes from, and, and, um, and about uh, British farming. Brilliant. So when we talk about engaging with the public, quite often the first thing that people will think about is school visits and hosting school visits on their farm. And, you know, that's something that is core to Leaf Education's uh, work. But I've got a selection of photographs here. Some, can I, in actual fact, can we have a show of hands? How many people here actually um, in, in welcome school children onto their farm? Oh, I'm surprised it's not more. But congratulations. That's on the way in, Annabelle. <laughs> Yeah, that's on the way in. We're going to change that. Well done. The exit Google. poll will show something different, I'm sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Honestly, it is... Uh, you, well, let me just finish what I'm saying, and hopefully by the end you'll, you'll be convinced to, um, to actually host visits. Most people, when they think of school visits, they think of primary school children, and that's a really great age to start. But as you can see from the pictures on the, um, on the slide, you know older people as well and it's you know there's often been discussion in the news about should farming be part of GCSEs and in actual fact it already is because it's written you can use farming as a topic to study so many uh, so much of the national curriculum of course it's different in Scotland and Wales to England but you know it's part can be part of maths part of English part of art it's already part of GCSE um, geography business studies 
Gaynor, um, who's one of our leaf education recs, has been organising an event called Hashtag Farm My Food for secondary school children. Uh, uh, hundreds of them turn up on one day um, on a farm and specifically tick off a whole load of the business studies curriculum in learning about food and farming and getting a whole host of different farmers together to talk about um, what they do. It, it's just amazing. So do, basically, you just need to work with whichever age group that you're comfortable with working with is the message. So we have a team of... We work predominantly in England and Wales, and we have a team of 14 uh, regional education consultants um, who can work, work with you and help you along that route. So that's... Oh, the other thing that I had to say here, that as part of the ELMS test and trials with DEFRA... Um, we actually did one of these and worked on a test and trial with teachers and actually training farmers um, to give them the skills to host farm visits and to actually do research and get feedback from the teachers as to what they thought about it and, and, and how it would work. And there's, there's often a lot of debate to say that schools won't pay for farm visits or, um, or that, you know, should we charge, should we not charge... And in actual fact, from the research that we found out, 100% all of the teachers involved said that what was being delivered on farm ticked their boxes. So, we, so farm, the farmers who provided those school visits were providing a service for the, um, for the teachers and actually helping the teacher to tick off certain elements of the curriculum, working in partnership with them. That was really powerful. And they also said that they would pay... To, to go back with their students another time. So, um, and one example that my director, Carl Edwards, asked me to, to say was that John Plum, um, near Birmingham, he hosts lots of school visits, and the model that he uses is that when he's in touch with a new teacher, the first time the children and the teacher come along, it's free, and from then on afterwards, they pay. And the teachers see the benefit for free and then come back and pay per child um, for the visit. So hugely powerful. There's opportunities to go into schools as well. I could talk for ages, but I think we ought to go into the next slide. <laughs> so you press the button. Thank you. So the next button is talking about training. So I, I, I've worked at LEAF for over 10 years now, and CVAS is a, is a word that we use. It actually stands for Countryside Education Visits Accredi Accreditation Scheme. It's actually um, accredited by the Open College Network at Level 2. I actually had a telephone conversation with a farmer about four months ago, and he was saying, what we need in this industry is training. There is training there. It's just that we need to get better at telling farmers about it, and, and we need to get more farmers to follow it. But at the moment, I think there's just under shy of 3,000 farmers have followed this CVAS training. And just to say, I mentioned earlier... On the slide at the beginning, there was that white column with all those different organisations in that were part of Access to Farms. It's that team, that group, that comes together and has developed the training. It's led by Leaf Education, but it, it is being developed and approved by all those organisations. There's a, um, a two-day course that you can go to, or there's a six-session online version that you can do and the information is available on the website so if you are looking at hosting school visits wanting to, uh, more information I would certainly look at doing that the other thing I would say is that as a, a membership organization you can go on to the leaf website find leaf education sign up to our free e-newsletter and uh, potentially become a member and then you'll get support from the regional education consultant in your area but I would uh, I, they, we are achieving a huge amount um, with farm visits. And also we organise networking events as well. And I have to say, I put the words networking events on that bottom right photograph with the lady with the stripy dress. And in actual fact, that is actually a teacher training event because we do training for farmers. We also do uh, training for teachers at all level, primary, secondary, and right through to university. So uh, we, we, um, training is a core part of our leaf education work. Countryside Classroom, if you are looking at inviting young people hosting school visits, Countryside Classroom is a website, um, it's been going for probably 10 years now, um, there are 30 partners um, who all post um, resources on there, 
it actually has over 100,000 unique users each year that go onto the website and download resources. 10,000 people read the regular blogs that come out every uh, three, uh, two or three weeks. And there are thousands of uh, teachers with accounts on there. So it, it's a great resource. There's a really brilliant search facility. So if you're... If, if it's at lambing time or something and you want to invite children, you're thinking, how would lambing fit into the topic for uh, primary school children? You know, how, how do, what's the level of communication that you need to actually talk with children at different ages? You can actually have a look at the different resources that have been, approved, uh, uh, that have been produced and are available to download free on the website and that will give you an in indication of the level that you can talk with people. Um, but that's, that, all of that type of information comes within the CVAS training. And then Speak Out on the right-hand side. It's available for free on the LEAF website. If you're involved with Open Farm Sunday, we have a section of Speak Out on, the web, on that uh, website too. And Speak Out just comes from the whole issue of when you have people on your farm and you're going to talk to them about why is there a ring in, in your bull's nose or the, the, the talk about pesticides or crop protection or anything like that. Tricky thing is that you're thinking, how on earth would I talk to a member of the public who knows nothing about? And there's lots of hints and tips with a whole load. There's PDFs you can download and there's a whole load of little videos uh, to watch that will just give you lots of hints and tips. Next one. Ah, this, and this is another. I'm so, I, I hope this one isn't going to sound boring, but I do have to mention it. And again, access to farms, the group. One, one thing, yes, it's ensuring that there are quality visits for people going on to farm, and we're getting across the farming message in a, 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 in a way that's effective. But there's also, when people come onto farm, there's the health and safety side of things. And as a partnership, we work together... Um, with the health and safety executive on this preventing or controlling ill health from animal contact at visitor attractions. It's something we have to do. We don't know with livestock on farm whether or not they've got um, a transmissible um, disease or not, uh, whether or not they've got E. coli, but there are certain things that need to be in place. And what we as a group have done working with the health and safety executive is actually understanding what the health and safety executive want and then talking to them practically about what is practicable for farmers to do on farm. And if you have school visits year in, year out, especially in the winter time, you will need to have warm water, running li uh, liquid soap, running water, liquid soap, paper towels. In the summertime for Open Farm Sunday, there is no need to have the hot water, but you still need to have running water, paper towels, um, liquid soap, and a bin to put the paper towels in, in a different order, obviously, than what I've just said. But it's just important, but it's just to say that if you are inviting the public onto farm, please do work in partnership with one of the organisations in the Access to Farms group, and do make sure that you find out that information, because there is lots of useful information to help you work your way through the, the uh, ensuring that you get it right. So, Open Farm Sunday. Okay, hands up. Who did Open Farm Sunday this year? What? Yay! Oh, well done, you Brilliant. guys. Brilliant. Round of applause, please. Round of applause. Well done. Over 250 farms across Britain. The statistics, if you were here earlier, you know, two and a half million people have gone out onto farm. And it's just fantastic. Our 2021 statistics showed that 43% of the people that, had, um, that went out onto farm in 2021 had never visited a farm before. Um, if you're on Twitter, one of our regional co consultants up in the northeast has done um, four or five uh, school visits this week. Um, so he must have had about 100, uh, 120 or so students onto his farm. He said over 30 of them had never touched a worm before, never done that, because they just don't. They're, they're, you know, their back gardens are concrete if they've got a garden. So you know, giving people the opportunity to go onto farm, learn about farming, is, is just fantastic. And this is where I've got to say that you're all about children 
but I know you're not. I know you're about adults as well and whatever. About everybody. Yeah, I know. We're all about everybody. But we do, you know, Open Farm Sunday, it is hugely important because it gets families onto farm. It gets the parents onto farm. There's all the issue about promoting careers in the sector and making sure that we've got the young, new generation coming in to support the industry. And research shows time and time again, there was a piece in The Guardian a month ago, another piece of research by Farming uh, by uh, something Futures, sorry, uh, Talking Futures, um, and once again saying that parents are the key influencers with young people making their decisions. So we've got to get the parents on board so that when their child comes home and says, I'm thinking I might want to go to agricultural college, we want the parents to say, ah, oh, do you remember that Open Farm Sunday when, the event we went to? God, that was fantastic. God, did you, do you remember that machinery, the science, the technology involved? We want them to say yes, don't we? And, and that's what we need. And so by get it, but that's one of the things that I think is fantastic with Open Farm Sunday and that we, we get from feedback is that people want to, um, you know, it is positively influencing them. Right. I don't know how I'm going to do this because I can't... Right, so on the photograph there, on the left-hand side, we've got Andy Basin. I don't know if Andy's still here. Oh, he was here earlier, one of our newest um, le uh, leaf demonstration farms that launched a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he... No, you've gone on to the wrong... Sorry, can you go back? Thank you. So this is Andy Basin here. Fantastic. He does Open Farm Sunday. He actually has a big market and craft sort of event on the estate, and he tags Open Farm Sunday onto that. Um, how brilliant. Can you see that square there? That's a square metre that he has as a prop because that's one of the things that you've got to have is, is a prop to be able to talk about um, what, we're, um, what we're, you know, to make, bring things alive. So here's my basket of props. And I actually developed this basket of props in um, a couple of weeks ago because there we had a few Open Farm Sunday events that happened the weekend before, and we've had a couple that have happened afterwards, and I offered my services to go along. And Courtine Hall, um, that's very close to here, they actually did an Open Farm Sunday event on a Saturday. And I chatted with them about where I might be able to help, and they said, well, you know, the biggest worry we have is that they had a couple of tractor and trailer rides, but it was having, the, um, having a long queue of people and them getting bored. So I just said... Don't worry about that. I'll entertain them. I'll come along. So I developed my box of tricks to take along with them. But the, the square meter initiative has actually been around for a while. But it was amazing how, if you just have a plant potted up next door to you, that people don't know that that is wheat. They really don't know that that is wheat, most people. And, uh, most people. and certainly, they're very surprised when they see this. And what we have with our Open Farm Sunday information is a table of information so that the average quantity of seed that you might sow in a square metre and what it produces and what you get from that. And you get around about, um, if I just double check my, you get, it takes about 300 seeds are sown in the ground. You get about a, a, a kilogram of flour from a, um, from a square metre. So uh, that's a little bit more. I think. No, that's one and a half kilograms. So that's, uh, imagine, uh, two-thirds of that. And then a loaf of bread. And most people are surprised that you actually get just one large loaf of bread from a square meter of wheat, which is interesting. It's, some people thought it was like 20 or 30 or whatever. Um, but, so, I, so I love doing that, love chatting with, that with people. And it's great if you actually have one of those grinders that you can put the grain in and actually grind it and get the flour. You obviously <laughs> have one of those, which is fantastic. But then, so that was one of my little sets of information that I had. But then, of course, the other one was, was that I'd say to them, well, that morning, it took me approximately three minutes, three, three and a half minutes to walk from my car into the supermarket to buy this loaf of bread and to go back to my car. So how long do you think it takes for one of these grains when it's planted in the ground? How long does it take for that to grow to become a plant ready to be harvested? Now, I'm not going to ask that question to you because you all know the answer. But I can assure you, I asked that to probably 300 uh, visitors at Courtine Hall 
and a handful knew the answer. I had a lovely, lovely uh, lad who thought that it would be uh, every two months that there'd be six harvests a year. Uh, honestly, you, so even if you are hosting an Open Farm Sunday event, don't forget the basics that people just don't know the simple things of how long it takes. And so I said to them that the next time they, well, as well as talking about how long it takes, I'd then say, well, thankfully, I'm a very healthy individual. I go to the doctor about, you know, once every three years, something like that. But I said that, do you know that this wheat plant, when it's growing in the ground, that has a special doctor for it, and it's called an agronomist, and that some farmers are trained agronomists, some are actually specialists. And they actually, they don't come once every three or four years. In the height of the season, they'll come and walk the crop once a week. They'll, they're, they're not only looking at the crop, but they're actually analysing the soil as well. They're making the decisions on what variety to grow. So just talked a little bit about that as well. And they went, whoa. And so I ended by saying to everybody that the next time you go into the supermarket and you reach for this loaf of bread from the shelf... Make sure you think of those farmers. Think of those nine months. Think of the science, the technology, the agronomy, and the skill that's gone into growing it. And then hopefully, there'll be a bit more respect. Hopefully, it will spark some discussions. And hopefully, it will um, yeah, encourage some people to come into our industry. So that's a few of my little tricks. Oh, yeah, next. And now we're talking about experiences. And that's the key thing with Open Farm Sunday, is it's about giving people that experience. And so, yeah, some fantastic images there. It's up to you. One thing I didn't say at the beginning with the, with the Open Farm Sunday, some of our Open Farm Sunday events are purely and simply a simple farm walk. And, do it, and we have hosting farm walks and talks books. We have information. We have a handbook giving you ideas as to how you can engage people if you want to do a simple farm walk. But if you want to do a more involved event, there are some simple things that, um, that you can do. And just engaging the senses, getting people to touch and feel chicks, um, growing, growing trees. But as um, Lucy Knott, who is responsible for the photograph bottom left, uh, was saying that actually planting a tree in June in a heat wave isn't the best plan, and it did take a lot of effort to actually water them to keep them going. But they did survive. Well, most of them did, I understand. Simple. Kids with buckets of grain. Soil sampling. Oh, I went to Bedfordia. If, if you live in Bedfordshire and you didn't go to Bedfordia Farms, Open Farm Sunday event last Sunday, you missed a treat. You walked in across a field where they'd actually... They had actually I, would, I have no... I dread to think how much it cost, but they did actually... Um, ha harvest a, a track across the field to get to the main yard for the Open Farm Sunday event, and they dug a soil pit. So the path kept around on the flat on one side, and they had a soil pit that went down a metre so that people could choose to either walk round or walk through the soil pit. Every time I walked past, it was heaving. People were loving it, so which is just fantastic. But the last thing that I wanted to say here on this one... And I hope that I can... Uh, now, this is uh, an Ali Hunter Blair one. I showed you a photograph of his farm. Do you think you could just un undo that knot, please, for me? Thank you. And if you could just um, walk to the end of the platform. So this is... When you've got equipment, have it, you know, having machinery there is great, but it's actually how do you engage people. And one of Ali Hunter Blair's um, tricks that he has is that he marks out on the... Uh, <laughs> That'll do. Thank you. Thank you very much. My lovely assistant. So this is actually five, me five metres long. And this is my Samsung mobile phone. And my GPS system, on my, the mapping on my Samsung mobile phone, is accurate to five metres. That's it. But in here... And when, oh, I'm sorry, I have to do this. But then when you talk to... Um, talk to people, you mention the lovely little satellite systems that they might see on a tractor cab, and then talk about the fact that they have uh, systems on the back of them which are accurate, and talk about precision farming, which are accurate to a 50 pence piece, to two and a half centimetres. People are absolutely 
bowled over by the accuracy. So then you can talk, you can show them mapping, um, uh, printouts of mapping that you have, and talk to them about direct drilling. Talk to them about um, about regenerative farming. And it just brings it to life. And it's just little tricks like that that just make it relevant. You could just talk about um, the, 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 the GPS system, but by actually getting people to stand in a ring and actually showing that the diameter of a circle that's five meters, it just brings it alive a little bit. Thank you. And it certainly entertained the crowd whilst they were waiting for the tractor and trailer ride at the Open Farm Sunday event that I went to. OK. And then this is just a big thank you. And we have got on here is the date for the next Open Farm Sunday. It's the 11th of June next year. So hopefully I can encourage you to get involved, whether you just organise a simple farm walk, whether you open up your farmyard or you go for a big open day. I'm here today and tomorrow on the leaf stand. So I'm happy to chat with you. Um, so please come and talk. It's a fantastic event and the buzz that the farmers have got out of hosting successful events is just amazing. The conversations that we've had them is brilliant, and the response that we've had from visitors is equally brilliant. So I do encourage you to take part. Thanks, Annabelle. And of course, we are looking at lots of different ways that you can engage with the general public, either on or off your farm. And so I want to talk about a little event that we run on our farm, and this is the bit where you can earn a thousand pounds for doing what you already do. Um, because last year we hosted Open Farm Sunday on our farm and because we were kind of in that peri-COVID period, we decided that we'd just do three walking tours. We had a great time, lots of questions, a, a, an amazing range of ages, demographics. Uh, and again, some people, you know, not only had they not touched a worm, they were terrified of a worm. Um, uh, and, and that's, you know, we, we do see that quite a lot. But, but actually what I felt like we, we, we could do we, to augment that uh, was to take people through our farming year. Um, uh, and so what we did was we offered the opportunity to walk with us every six weeks for two hours on a Saturday morning. Now, I have a little bit of a vanity, you know, a little bit of an ego to get up here on the stage and talk to you guys, but I don't have enough of an ego to be fully comfortable and confident selling a ticket to spend time with me. But that's in essence what we were doing. And, and you know what? I've really learned that people just want to hear from you guys. They want to see what you're doing. They want to understand your decision making. And they want to meet with you and journey with you. And so we've just finished our seventh walk of eight. Uh, and we charge 70 pounds per ticket to come on eight walks with us. Uh, and we had about 15 or 16 people. So we gave them a cup of tea when we met at eight o'clock in the morning. We gave them a cup of tea at 10 to 10 when we put them back in their cars and sent them home. Uh, and we've walked through the farming year. We've seen things being planted and grown, fertilized, decisions made. And we've had, I mean, the, the person who travels the furthest comes from, to our farm from Oxford. So they travel nearly two hours to get with us at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. We have the lady who's the leader of the, the Food Policy Committee for Peterborough, um, who doesn't know anything about farming, but does now as she's learning. Um, people from the local wildlife trusts. Um, we have a guy who's just fascinating the economics of farming, wants to know about how we forward sell uh, and how we you know, manage our input costs. Um, we, uh, you know, we have a whole range of people, and they're here to, to hear me talk to them. I mean, and I, I take, it's taken me a little while to, to, to kind of understand that. Um, and so really, that, that I've, I've taken £1,000 for doing that. I've made probably 150 cups of tea, or perhaps my wife has made 150 cups of tea, between us. Um, but do you know what? I was going to go for a walk on a Saturday morning anyway. I was going to go for a couple of hours around and look at the crops. And so all I've done is just taken 15 people with me. Uh, and we've had conversations about oh, all the hot topics. But actually, as a group of friends uh, standing in a field of wheat talking about badgers or TB or glyphosate, whatever it might be. What a great way. It's been amazing. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. George Hosier does the same and has had a fascinating group. Um, with him. He was surprised. He, he takes some farmers with him as well. You know, they all, they all want to come and learn from each other. But um, there are people who have from very little understanding uh, uh, of, uh, of UK farming. That said, on the first walk, I've, I only remembered four of the five regenerative pillars. So um, that, was, <laughs> that was not ideal. Uh, and I'm just going to step away from Annabelle for a moment because occasionally people say to me, um, Tom, you love having people on your farm, don't you? And I say to them, actually, not always. Uh, in fact, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. You know, there's some great things we can do with, with those on-farm events. 
But, but sometimes it can be, you know, it's a, it's a higher tier event to get people onto your farm. But there are things you can do without, without kind of crossing that threshold that are a little bit easier, that suit some of us uh, a little bit better. And signage is a great thing. Just get some signs up on your farm. I, I'm, I'm so far in the wake of Martin Lyons here of NFFN, um, who's actually um, puts up a little sign next to many of his fields, particularly if they're along a, a footpath, obviously a long footpath or a road boundary. Uh, and actually, he's got some great support from his local village. In fact, he realized that they were walking uh, along this particular footpath, and he planted a wildflower margin. And then he started to put signs about what, you know, about what we're doing on the farm, how we're, how we're looking after the environment. And he said, there used to be people who just let their dogs go. And he said, now, because I've explained what I'm doing, he said the local um, interest groups, uh, people who are particularly, you know, you've all got them in your village, I'm sure, uh, police that. <laughs> they are on to people. You know, he said, I put a, picture, a video up the other day of somebody in the, or, or just of a dog way off in the distance. And he said, you know, this is, this is through where there are ground nesting birds. He said, you know, and, and that was the community then, you know, um, uh, resolved that. Um, but signs are very easy to do. Uh, no blood was shed, I don't, I don't think. Uh, but signs are a great thing to do. Uh, it's a very simple thing for us to do. If we are, if we are uh, a massive extrovert or uh, an incredible introvert, then signs will, will work for you. And I want to also talk about um, uh, writing in your, in your local news, in your parish magazine. I don't know if anybody has a parish magazine and they're not writing in it, but I would say that's a significant opportunity. And I approached a few years ago to the editors of our two local, I suppose, newspapers, parish magazines, etc. And they were so excited. They were like, we were longing for a farmer to come and write. And I write, I mean, what have I written here? February is a cold, bitter month, but mercifully short. You know, I talk about what happened last year, what, what's happening on the farm, what's happening in terms of in nature uh, and the decisions that we're making and how things are impacting us on the farm. And I always finish by saying in season at the moment is the following, and thank you for supporting British farmers. And I was going to give that up a couple of years ago, but in the course of a week, three lovely older citizens approached me and said, I love reading what you write. And that's the bit I read first. And I, I thought, gosh, wow. You know, but we can all do that. We can all do that. And actually, I've, ri I've written for the, obviously, 12 months of the year for the last five years. So I've got a bit of material if you want to uh, contact me. <laughs> we'll happily recycle that through um, because uh, you'll no doubt be having the same wishes and, uh, and trials and tribulations that, that perhaps I've had in previous years. So um, I do write a fresh one each time. You might just want to at least top and tail it. Um, so that's local news. Um, and then I want to talk about social media as well. I mean, we, we, we all get a bit wor worked up about social media. Some of us love it, some of us hate it, some of us are kind of uh, very, uh, very on the fence. Um, and there are, there are examples on the screen here of people who just go all out. I mean, you've got um, Richard Heady there, for example, uh, who make, who's from Bedfordshire, makes some fantastic videos. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening on the farm. Uh, and he always finishes with cheers, which I love. But, uh, you know, you've got Martin Lines up there, who I've just mentioned, who's fantastic on his social media, often just puts some, put some pictures up. You've got uh, Gareth Wynne Jones, who really, really takes it to uh, to certain members of the uh, the community who aren't such big fans of, uh, of 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 the broad areas of farming. But really, you just need to put a picture up. You, you don't need to get involved. I know that you know we can be sometimes a bit worried about people saying, "Oh, you know, you're wrong," or uh, "You're whatever." Um, but actually, we've got an amazing canvas on our farms in the countryside, uh, and actually, it might just be a, a matter of saying, you know, today we're you know, we're planting some wheat that's going to go to make bread. It can be as simple as that. So I would encourage you, you know, even just, just, just to step in and do that because the more, the more that people see of that, the more they'll put two and two together uh, between what we're doing and, and the food that they're eating. And also it's so important that they know a farmer. It's really important. People want to know a farmer. Um, and I want to just finish by talking about farmer time. This is my kind of five minutes. Uh, it's a long elevator ride, but it's uh, my, my five minute summary on farmer time. And, uh, and really, this is, this is one of my absolute pleasures on our farm. We started farmer time five years ago. We, uh, we pair farmers and teachers around the UK. Uh, so each farmer has their own class. Each class has their own farmer. And we do video calls every two or three weeks throughout the year. Uh, and through those video calls, the children get to know a farmer. You know, when they hear, uh, oh gosh, you know, farmers just douse the countryside in chemicals or they just they abuse their animals or they you know they're evil 
they say, well, hang on a minute, now I know Farmer Tom. I, and I don't think that's, how, you know, they're able to kind of process that information without just taking it hook, line and sinker. And it's a great, great outcome of this. We now have about 850 farmers, but we have 1,000 teachers looking for, uh, looking for farmers as part of the project. So we're 150 farmers in deficit and just encouraging people to sign up. Um, my, the teacher that I've been paired with for the last five years will often just send me a text, say, to, you know, Tom, at the moment we're studying you know, climate change or water or worms or pollinators or soil or nutrition, whatever it might be. And I say, great, okay, Friday, whatever time we arrange, 2.15, I will be by, by the muck heap and we'll talk about soil biology or I'll be, you know, I'll be in, the, in a wildflower margin and we'll talk about pollinators. Um, uh, and it's dead, dead simple. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and, and the children, I, I normally introduce, hi guys, it's Farmer Tom here. Today I'm down uh, looking at the sheep, uh, to see if they're going to lamb and um, looking at this pond, whatever it might be that's relating into what they're learning. And, and with that, they then just ask questions. And their curiosity is incredible. I don't think I've ever had fewer hands up at the end of the call than I have at the beginning. So I would encourage all of you to really take part in it. It's something that we can all do, farmers and agronomists, uh, and it's, it takes very little time. It's free. We've got some great sponsors, so it's, uh, so it's completely free for our farmers and teachers. And it makes a massive difference. And I know that they get to journey with us through the year. That's one of the joys of being a farmer, is you just kind of get, connect to the seasons, and you, and you journey through the farming year. And they do that with us. And I know on the fourth or fifth call, um, for 10, 15 minutes, I will hear the names of different children asking questions. And they're the ones that were too nervous at the beginning to ask a question or didn't have the confidence to, to speak up. But by that fourth or fifth time, so we, you know, by the time we get to you know, springtime, they're asking questions. And a real farmer who they really know is answering their question. And that's incredibly powerful. Um, and you can do that from the comfort of your own farm. Uh, and you can find out loads more information at, at, at farmertime.org. There's my class. Um, actually, there's my class of about three years ago. Sorry, it's a little bit dark. Um, they peer pressured me to climb up on the top of our heap of grain in the shed. Um, and anyway, we had our photo taken there. Um, and that's exactly the format. That's what they see in the class. So my face, my fuzzy face comes up on the screen uh, and the teacher facilitates it. So there's no fights. There's no, uh, no issues or worries or difficult questions. The teacher kind of facilitates it at all times. But it's tremendously organic. It really fires their imagination and it links directly to the curriculum, what we're doing on the farm. And a very brief anecdote, the teacher... Um, I've got a great teacher, but uh, a year or so in, she sent me a message and said, Tom, let's not do our call today. There's nothing we can talk about that we're covering in the curriculum. And I replied, what are you talking about? And she said, genetics. And I said, everything every farmer ever does is about genetics. Everything, everything, literally everything we do is about genetics. We're breeding, uh, you know, high-yielding crops or, or healthier animals or, uh, you know, cows that give birth easier or whatever it is we're doing. And we sat in between two fields of rapeseed, uh, two different varieties, and I said, the thing on my farm is I've got a lot of pigeons. And I, need, I explained what vigor was. I need autumn vigor. And I need to look at which variety is the most vigorous in the autumn will suit my farm. And they were learning about genetics, and they had no clue. Uh, and you as farmers know a lot about genetics, even if you don't think you know a lot about genetics. You absolutely do. Um, so I'd really encourage you to, to, to take part. Um, uh, we've, we've started going across the world as well, so there's, you know, you'll be part of a huge global community. There's, a, there's currently 25,000 children in the UK who every two weeks go virtually to their own farm that they know, and there's 28,000 children across the world. So my goal, which I haven't really made fully public yet, is to get to 100,000 children in the UK going to a, a UK farmer every two weeks within four years, and the same thing for around the world. We do it around the world as a gift. It's not, it's not, to, it's not a money maker, and it's not to, you know, it's, I'm, I'm near... I'm mainly passionate about UK children talking to UK farmers, but I can get quite excited about Australian farmers talking to Australian school children as well. Uh, so that's farmer time as we come in to, to finish. Oh, there's a few more stats here. They're, they're pairings we've got so far, um, the number of children we've impacted, uh, and there's our goal, 100,000. And, and, and we absolutely should get there. We absolutely should get there. We just need 4,000 farmers out of a population of, uh, uh, of 85,000 farms, so we should be able to get that uh, pretty easily. Maybe, maybe you guys will be the um, 996th, um, that would be great. But I thought we'd just finish up, actually. Oh, you can have your face up there, look. There you go. Uh, and it's not terrifying at all. I tell you what, it's, it's the first time you just need a little bit of JFDI. But I, want, but I probably get a, a message once a week from a farmer saying, I've just done my first call. It was amazing. It was a highlight of my week already, and I cannot wait for the next one, so go for it. And I just thought we'd finish up, um, Annabelle. Um, I wonder, we, we've, we've, we've shown you a fair few things that we do there, but I think we're here to inspire each other. So I wonder if you guys are doing any other things to engage with the public. 
that perhaps we haven't highlighted here that we could, we could perhaps share. So just have a think. Yeah, if you could give us one sentence, because we are, I've had 10 minutes waved at me and there's five minutes is approaching. Yeah, so if you want to give us one sentence, would you mind just running out with the, with the oh, mic? Yeah. Would that be okay? No, no, no. Yes. Just in the middle there, yeah. Just give us one sentence. I know I've said that three times, but sometimes we get windy. I know I do. We do a day program with the foreign students from the local university. And they fly into Britain to do a master's course, and they just never get out of the city. But a lot of them are going into government jobs that have a rural development thing. Fantastic. And actually, do you know what? A great reminder is, is I, I actually love to ask a little quick poll. Who's written to their MP in the last 12 months? Brilliant. Gosh, they're pretty good. That's probably the best audience I've ever spoken to, about 50%. And who's had the MP on the farm in the last 12 months? There's quite a few of you. Brilliant. What a great opportunity. Your, your MPs are keen to get out to your farms and have a photo of themselves taken, but don't let them take that photo until you've told them a lot about your farm and what they can do to support you. Any others who are doing... Yeah, go on. There's a gentleman here. Oh, go on. We'll, we'll give you a microphone so you can go. Hey, we did a presentation at the primary school and we give every kid a double yolk or egg home with them and they all had to cook it different and they all gave us a letter back. What a great idea. What a great idea. There must be some more here. Come on, you guys. This is a fertile field, I'm sure, of, of ideas for engagement. Yeah, go on, sir. Well done. <laughs> well done for doing a sentence of eyes. Very good. Oh, yeah. We did uh, a rogation service with our church. They were really keen. They came around. The vicar blessed the crops. Talked about all things. We got into why people need to eat deer that are killing my crops and making me put extra fertilizer on, things like that. And really worthwhile discussions. Brilliant, great idea, great idea. I reckon, well, I reckon we've got probably two more. Let's see if we can get a couple more. If it's you and you're thinking, well, we do one little thing, probably not worth you know, it. Let's go for it, let's hear it. Uh, we run a cow pat bingo uh, at our local village fair. <laughs> cow, could you just explain for those who aren't aware what cow pat bingo is, what cow pat bingo is? So you, you sell all the squares for a pound uh, and grid, grid a field out, sell all the squares. And uh, then once the squares are sold, you release the cow. Uh, and that, uh, that's the winner. Wherever what a fantastic thing to do. Brilliant. I actually went to a wedding, and that was part of the entertainment. Gosh, that was a very rural wedding. Is there one more? Who else has got an idea of something they've been doing to engage with the public? Yeah, go on, madam. Hey. I'm making the lovely lady with the sign run around so she can't wave at five minutes remaining at me. Um, not me, because I'm not a farmer, but uh, we support a lovely primary school in West London that does soil analysis on the soil in their playground, and they're partnered with a farm who do the same tests, so the children can compare what's happening in their schoolyard to what's happening on a real farm, which is amazing. Oh, that's a, that's a great thing to do. Well done. And, that, and do you know, we're, on our farm, when, we're talk, when we go and talk about grasses, I take my cap off and I throw it, and I say, well, I'm going to go and look under my cap and see what I've found, see what flowers I've found, see whether I've found some clovers, and, we, and we, you know, we get into nitrogen fixation, all that kind of stuff, but just, just from chucking the cap. So um, that's, that's fantastic, because then they go into their playground, and they want to see if they've got the same diversity and see what's going on there. So that's a, a great, great thing. Um, Annabelle, am I handing over to you to wrap up? Yeah, just quickly. Sorry. Just quickly, because none of you have mentioned Scouts. Scouts and Guides, fantastic organisation. They love to get out onto a farm and come for a farm visit one evening. They also... Um, are actually, they actually have a community badge, so if you do do Open Farm Sunday, um, then do think about getting your local scouts or cubs to come along and help with um, managing car parks and things, because that's fantastic. And so I don't know if... The, is the photograph up? No, it's not. Uh, no, don't worry. Um, but there's, there's a photograph uh, on, uh, on another slide. But I'm, I'm a beaver scout leader, and I take my beavers on farm walks regularly, and we do this uh, simple thing, which is a journey stick or a journey map. So basically, you give the children a stick, you give them a long piece of string or wool, and then you keep scissors and wool with you. And at the start of your walk, you, st you tie a knot with your string. And as you're walking along, they'll find something and pick something up and put it along there. And so your walk starts at one end of the stick and ends at the other. And then when they come back to the beginning, they go running up to their parents and say, look, mummy, look what I found. And I did this, and they can tell you where they found that, in which field, and where the feather was, and they've learned along the way. And it just helps to them to remember and take home their farm visit. And that's just another simple 
um, little trick. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you, Anna. And Beaver's, of course, a big topic here at Grounds for us, so that's fantastic. But if I can just finish by a little, little personal note by saying, uh, we've got another talk a little bit later on called Learn From My Mistakes, so I'm going to share with you all the mistakes I've made uh, and those of some others as, we, as we've gone about our regenerative journey. And that is at 530 uh, you're not allowed to have a pint this evening until you've been there, 5.30 at the Agricology Discussion Tent. But from Annabelle and myself, thank you so much. Um, it's been great to kind of share some ideas and to hear some of yours. It's absolutely brilliant. Be inspired. Go for it. We, 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 it's, it's part of our role and our responsibility as we steward the environment, as we grow food, to market ourselves. Every other industry does it, and that's to open the farm gate in whatever way it might be and show people why they should be proud to buy British farm uh, produce. So thank you very much, and... Good lunchtime.